my glazed kugelov is impressive and delicious. Now, a kugelov is a yeast bread, buttery and rich, almost like a brioche, but it's baked in this impressive tin. So before I can glaze anything, I have to make my kugelov dough. Now, usually you find dried fruits in your kugelov, and it could be any dried fruit you prefer. I've got two thirds of a cup of raisins and a third of a cup of dried cherries. I'm going to add a tablespoon and a half of apple juice. You could use orange juice. And it's just to soak and soften the fruit. To start the dough, first I need three and a quarter cups of bread flour. Because this is a rich sweet bread, I add a third of a cup of sugar. I need one and three quarter teaspoons of yeast. And I'm using instant yeast, which is why I can add it directly to the dry ingredients. And because I stir the yeast right in with the flour, I can actually add my half a teaspoon of salt along with my dry ingredients. Now I measured out three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons of milk, and I just heated it up to lukewarm. I add one whole egg and one yolk. And I'll get this set on my mixer. And when the ingredients start coming together, that's when I can add, a piece at a time, my two-thirds of a cup of unsalted butter. Now that my dried fruits have had a chance to soak, I'll add them in. And I'll mix this until it's blended. Gorgeous. Now I'll put this in an ungreased bowl. The dough won't stick with all that butter in it. Now you want to give your kugelhoff dough time to rise. It takes about 90 minutes and it will double in size. And here it is after it's had its chance to sit. When you're rolling or shaping bread, it doesn't matter if you use all purpose or bread flour. I like to shape the dough into a ball, knocking out the air at the same time. The more you work it around, the more you're challenging the yeast to come back to life, that built in flavor and great texture. Now, to get it into the tube shaped pan, what I do is just essentially make a donut. What you want to do is with each of these creases in the Kugelhoff pan, drop in a blanched almond. So when you turn it out of the oven, those almonds make a crown on top of the Kugelhoff. Now I turn this so that the ring is now at the top and you want to press it in really well. Now you have to set it aside for another 45 minutes. All that air you knocked out of the dough, you have to let return to it before you put it in the oven. And here's the dough after the 45 minutes, and now it's ready for the oven. I've preheated my oven to 350, and I'll give this 45 minutes. Right before it's done, I'll get that hot glaze ready. My kugelhoff is almost ready to come out of the oven. So now is the perfect time to prepare the hot glaze. Now this is really something special. The hot glaze adds shine and essentially seals in the kugelhoff. So it stays fresh for a couple of days. I'm going to heat up my three quarters of a cup of sugar with a quarter cup of water and just add a touch of vanilla for flavor. About a quarter teaspoon. It's very important that your glaze is hot and your kugelhoff is hot when you bring the two together. If the kugelhoff is cold, the glaze might actually soak in instead of staying on the outside. Let's go check on that kugelhoff. Oh, stunning. I've got a nice even browning on the surface, so I know it's done. Flip this upside down. And I wanna put my cooling rack on a tray because when I pour the glaze on, you wanna catch any extra drips. Oh, and there we go. Absolutely gorgeous. I have my hot bread and the glaze. I wanna start pouring it on top 
And then I like to switch to a brush, especially sometimes it can get hard to reach right in the center here. Now you want to set this aside to cool completely before you cut into it. That allows time for the glaze to actually dry and sometimes it even crackles a little bit. And here it is in all its glory. Oh, look at that dough. Oh, and the glaze on top. Mmm. Oh, it's so buttery and tender and light. Mmm.